I was right. And I usually am with this kind of stuff. I've worked with Battlestate for a long time. I've seen their blunders and I've seen their success. And this situation really isn't much different than the others with the exception of it affecting the community in a much more serious way. Let's be honest, I didn't say it in the last video, but it really was screwing the entirety of EOD owners. But there's some good news. There's a silver lining, there is a rainbow, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we have some good news from Nikita today. Let's check it out. So they posted on Twitter about seven hours ago. I'm a little late to the party on this one. Okay, I had to go mow my lawn, all right? Leave me alone. Uh, and Nikita had this to say on Reddit. Oh, uh, and yes, uh, angry comments in the last video. Here you go. You fucks. Nikita says, greetings. Let me continue my feedback on the current situation. First of all, I would like to say that I'm very sorry that fans and the game community in general are experiencing these feelings. Unfortunately, I somehow did not foresee the fact uh, of such a reaction. And now I have drawn conclusions for my future decisions. Um, I think I, I genuinely think he did uh foresee it a little bit i just don't think he thought it was going to be as bad because everybody reacts to things differently there there is a from my experience this is all confirmation bias because this is all comments i've gotten on my youtube in my discord and on twitter there's actually a decent part of the community that this didn't bother at all they're either the silent majority or they're the silent minority um i was approached by multiple people in the last 24 hours saying dude like what's the big deal and i was genuinely surprised by that because even i was very upset about this i own eod it was given to me. I did not buy EOD. It was given to me by Battlestate for my participation in this game's development. And even I was just like, damn, really? Now I, I have to spend money on the game now. Fuck. So I was a little, I was upset about it too. And I think that helped me see it uh, from your side as well. So here we go. Uh, now I'll briefly summarize the main points. These are good. About PVE access. We decided to just open it for EOD owners for free. Mm. But we will do it in waves. Understandable. Because some people might get bored of it and be like, all right, I want PvP. Uh, and correction, in the last video, I said single player a lot. I meant co-op. I record a voice lines for the co-op, not a single player standalone version. Apologies. I think I corrected it at the end of the video, but either way, I said it twice and I apologize for that. My bad. We'll start this process as soon as possible. Good. We also decided that we'll add mod support for the PvE mode after release of the game. I think Nikita saw my last video, and this pleases me. I really hope they team up with the guys that are modding the SPT AKI. I really, really do. This this is exciting. This is awesome, man. Imagine being able to mod your own version of Tarkov to do whatever you want. Oh, that is good news. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Uh, about the Unheard Edition, they're not going to remove it. I never, th I never thought they would. I recommended that they did and changed its name to the Giga Chat Edition and did an event. And it didn't add any perks, but I didn't expect them to. We're not going to remove it. We want to keep the option for those who want to support the game more. Good. Uh, but we're going to balance items, perks in this edition as well, as we'll provide more rewards for those who upgraded with the old price. Now, if you watch my video again, Nikita Battlestate, and chance that you did watch the first one, if you watch this one, I think... The call for backup needs to be PvE only. That's opening a horrible door for RMT traders and other people to and cheaters to really screw players over. I think it needs to be a single player only. As far as the unheard uh, little item, I'm going to have a bit of a hot take on that, especially in the current state of everything. I think that little item is okay. As long as everybody can eventually get it in the game. I've been saying for years that you should be able to eventually get to a point where scavs do not shoot you. I, I, I've said that for years. I believe Pestily is with me on that. And a, and a lot of other creators, I'm sure, agree that it would be nice to have high fence rep and scavs don't even bother you. In fact, it would be cool if you were a high enough level that they fucking ran from you. How cool would that be? Uh, I'm very much on the side of Pestily where, when he says that scavs should just be alarm sensors. And I agree with that. They should be. They're just farmers with busted ass guns. They're not Master Chief or Killa in this game's case. New EOD perks will be balanced too. We're going to remove prioritized matching. What did I say? What did I say? Remove it all together or just give it to everyone. And they did it or they're going to do it. Yes. 
We're going to remove the option to keep everyone in the same spot, and we're going to add more unique stuff to highlight the EOD version in general. So EOD owners are going to get more stuff. Uh, we'll provide the final list of the new EOD perks ASAP. Good. We're going to continue to work on patches, new content events in the game itself, no matter what. I think this is response to uh, a tweet uh, went a little viral because Asmongold read it out loud on his stream and a lot of people picked up on it. Um, there was a lot of rumors that Battlestate's just going to abandon the game after 1.0. Um, that's not going to happen. I don't. I, there's something I don't know, like is the game going to become a live service? I don't know that but I think it will. Most games do nowadays. It's how they stay afloat. It's such a double-edged sword because a game like Overwatch, man, everybody only hates Overwatch because of the microtransactions and how expensive they are. But man, if Overwatch isn't the best game I've ever played in my life, I've been playing it since the day it came out eight fucking years ago now. Holy shit. I still play it every day. Every day. It's the only Blizzard game I have installed. I play Overwatch every day. My name is Gator. Add me. Right there, Gator, hashtag 12849. <clears throat> voice crack but so yeah this is really good news uh i really am a lot of people said like dude 40 i think they watched your video because they they they're doing things that i said they should do and i think would make a lot of people really happy and so far the response from a lot of people on twitter is good uh people are starting to calm down and I like this. However, there is still more that needs to be done. And I've prepared a list of things I'd like to talk with you guys about in the comments. Cordially, talking to you people that uh, may or may not sent me death threats over a stupid fucking YouTube video. Man, that's got to stop. But anyway, here's the list. Uh, PVE should be accessible to everyone with any copy of the game. And if they truly have to go down the road um, of paying for more servers for it, Here's a few things that we can sell to players to help pay for that. Increase the sales of clothing. I have been wanting to buy cool clothing in Tarkov for years. As soon as they made clothing available to buy with real money, I went and I bought the Punisher hoodie and the jeans immediately because I wanted my Yusek character to look like he's just wearing normal clothes trying to survive in the fucking apocalypse. The Tarkov apocalypse. So increase sales of clothing. Hiring an artist that can put out one texture for each operator, Yusek and Bear, every two weeks shouldn't be too much to ask for the artist. I don't know anything about artistry at all. I don't know if a very skilled person could put out two textures every two weeks or one a week for each operator. Generally speaking, especially with the use of AI. We've seen Pokemon Go use it. We've seen Ark Survival Evolve use it. We've seen a lot of... I think even Blizzard is doing it in World of Warcraft to upscale textures and to maybe even design some for them so they look better. And obviously, this artist that you hire to do this should be the only person doing that because they're the artist. They know best. Yes, anybody can go use AI to generate a texture. I can do it on my phone. I can make it 4K, and it looks decent. But I don't know if it's going to look good on a pair of pants. That's what an artist is for. And this is how they're going to keep their jobs. They're going to kind of be the architect uh, for art going forward, I fear. That's probably what they're going to be stuck doing. Anyway, enough of that aside. Battlestate also scans a lot of their stuff. So if they don't need AI, they just scan stuff. An artist comes in and says, yeah, I'm going to do this. It's going to take me a couple weeks. Get this out on the operators and get it for sale. And these only need to cost a couple bucks. This game has millions of players and probably a good majority of the player base is going to be like, holy shit, you know, I love the fucking uh, new fucking Ariat style Digicam or Army or Dark Green Marine style Digicam that I can wear on my USEC or Bear now. If USEC came out with a shirt and pants that had the Ariat Digicam on it, I would shell out $50 for it because that would be the coolest looking operator in the fucking game ever. Hey, uh, last minute editor 41 here. And uh, yeah, I'm not bald assholes. Thanks for those comments too. Battlestate, maybe consider reaching out to companies like Ariat that would sponsor putting their stuff in the game. Like an Ariat shirt. They will pay you to put a shirt in the game that you then in turn sell. You share a little bit of the profits with a company like Ariat, but definitely do that. There is real companies out there that make real combat like clothing and gear that would be happy to partner up with you games like overwatch and smite do it all the time with like cartoons and animes and stuff where they'll have skins for like mccree that's cowboy bebop i think they just did that actually <clears throat> and they made a ton of money on it and the, the the people that own the rights to cowboy bebop got a little bit of a 
a, a throwback from that as well. So please consider that. It's a good idea. All right, deuces. So here's my idea for weapon skins. These are paints that you, when you buy it, you buy it for a specific gun, okay? And you can, maybe not a specific gun, but maybe like Armalite rifles, the AR-10s and AR-15s, or the AKs, or American submachine guns, or Russian submachine guns. I don't know if selling the paint to just use it ubiquitously would be a very good idea because I feel like everybody would get it and then it would never be sold again. So maybe it would need to be targeted for a certain type of gun. I don't know anything about marketing. So I don't know. All I have is the idea here. Weapon skins and paints you can apply to your gun an infinite amount of times. If you lose the gun and another player takes it, it retains that paint or skin until the weapon is sold or destroyed. I think people would really like that. I think people would like, you know, this is my build. I want it to have this paint on it. And give us a lot of paints. Don't just give us two paints in the beginning. Give us a repertoire of paints. Give us 50 paints that we can use and, and, and pick and choose from. You know, that's one thing about Star Citizen that drives everybody fucking nuts is they don't have enough ship paints and they're not easily accessible. They've got maybe a very small spectrum of colors and it sucks. So Battlestate, be different. But yeah, these are my ideas on things that still need to be changed about the Unheard Edition in the game going forward. PvE needs to be an experience for everybody. At least until the cheating situation is under control, because I still will not play the game until I know I'm going to stop getting hunted down by these guys. I don't know what I ever did to piss them off, but fuck. It's as bad as I make it out to be, and my viewers can vouch for me. It's terrible. Especially when every other one of them runs up to me in the game and says my name and says hello to my stream, and then I'm dead, and I don't even fucking see them. But thanks for watching, guys. I love being right. I usually am. When you keep a level head on things and you don't get fucking outraged even though you guys had all the right to be i'm not trying to say you shouldn't have been you had every right to be upset but once you calm down smoke a fucking bowl or have a beer and start thinking about it like you know a level-headed adult we'll get through this stuff and this is exactly what battle state needs is just a cordial discussion and they'll be like fuck all right we fucked up they've done it every time in the past they've owned up to their mistakes and they've done it again and they will continue to do that again i have faith in this company and I know I get, I've been getting made fun of in the comments for saying that, but I've never been wrong. I have never in, in the five years uh, of working with this company have ever been wrong about them eventually fixing their stupid fucking mistakes. And they do make them. It's their first game. They're not AAA, but they probably could be someday if they keep listening to us and doing what we ask of them. This is how games survive. It's by being with your community, endorsing your community, Wanting their input to be a part of your game. Wanting the modders to be a part of your game. Don't, please don't excommunicate the modders. They are so integral to a game's success. And especially now that Battlestate has said they're going to enable mods. Good. Stay on that path. And another thing I want to say in closing is that I am humbled by so many of you that have reached out and said that my input on this whole thing is invaluable because of my circumstantial position with Battlestate. And I promise you, I will always be on your side. I might not always be able to be there to catch you when you fall, but I will always pick you back up off the ground and brush you off. That I promise you. Every member of my community is important to me. And as a part of the Battlestate games and Tarkov community in and of itself, you are all important to me. And if I can ever be the voice of reason for you, in a crazy situation like this again, just ask. So thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you. Also, there's a lot of you that found my Kickstarter, so I'm gonna put it in the in the uh, description. Um, thanks for that. We're already 20% of the way there. Um, I was kind of on the fence about posting the video to YouTube about that, and uh, I'm glad I did. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Nice work, bitch!